You wanted the picks, you got the picks. The hottest picks in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. 138 MMA here to bring you yet another Bellator vs. Ryzen breakdown. In this matchup, we have a rematch. In fact, it's a trilogy matchup between Koichi Horiguchi, and I'm going to butcher this one, Hiramasa Algikubo. You're going to bear with me. That's what I'm going to call it, Algikubo. Don't know if that's right. Anyway, for Algikubo, 4-1 and one in his last five fights. We got 2-3 and three on the Horiguchi side. Now, that's a bit misleading, though, because Horiguchi has been fighting the top of the top guys over in Bellator, whereas Horiguchi, although he's fought some good level of competition over in Ryzen, it's just not quite the same level. So... For Horiguchi here, the level of competition has been higher, and he's been able to maintain a 30-5 and five record throughout his career, facing a higher level of competition. Uh, for the Ogikubo side, good record, don't get me wrong, 25-6-2, but as of late, he hasn't been fighting the likes of Horiguchi, for example. Um, but they have fought twice, once back in 2013, once in 2018. Uh, we're going to cover that in just a moment, but first, we're going to go over some of the basic statistics here and basic numbers. For Algi Kubo, he is 35 years old, so he's getting closer to the end of his career at flyweight. That is kind of a later age. Um, he's only five foot three with a 64 inch reach. On the Horiguchi side, he's a bit younger, 32, um, five five with a 65 inch reach. So a little bit more of an advantage there. The biggest key in this matchup, though, is the footwork of Horiguchi. He has great footwork. He he moves in, steps in nice and quick, throws in combination, gets back out without getting hit most of the time the problem is he does hold his hands a little bit low so when he does step in if he's not you know connecting and you you snap something up you can catch him on his way in uh that can be timed especially on the Ogikubo side because he does have a really good front leg uh head kick so he uses it's kind of like a point karate style kick where he'll snap that leg up and kick without any sort of wind up or anything like that um Although he's going for the face, not not the body like you would to particularly in uh, point karate. But either way, he snaps it up really fast. Uh, there's no sell, no no setup to it. So something like that could catch Horiguchi. Obviously, these two fought twice before, though. So we've got some some good sample size to go off of here. Uh, Ogikubo does have a good leg kick. He's able to build on that throughout. Good leg kicks on Horiguchi's side as well. But I don't, I don't think these guys are going to stand there and kick legs the whole fight. So we have that. The, the interesting issue for Horiguchi... He can be controlled by grapplers. We saw uh, we saw that quite a bit in the patchy mix fight, uh, where he was just controlled for large portions of the fight, multiple rounds. He was just controlled the whole time. But he does have really good submission defense, so it's hard to get him out of there. So you got to control him enough that you're not going to let him snap back with his own offense. Because we also saw that in the, the patchy mix fight. When they were on the feet, Horiguchi was landing the better shots, landing more volume, everything like that. But once he got taken to the ground, he did have a really hard time getting back up but he can survive. On the Aogikubo side, he's probably going to want to get this to the ground. He is a decent grappler. The problem that I see on his side is that if it's not working for him on the feet, he relentlessly tries to get it to the ground almost to a fault, where he just dumps every other bit of his game plan and just tries to get get you up against the, the ropes and pull you down. Uh, yes, I said ropes. is taking place in the Ryzen ring if you haven't caught any of my other videos, but he'll try to get it to the ground using that as quickly as he can, and he just dumps everything else out. In, to his benefit, though, he does have great cardio. He doesn't gas himself out when he's shooting these takedowns. He's able to keep going and doing that for the whole two, three rounds or whatever. I just, after watching the first two fights between these two, I went back and watched the 2018 match. That's a more recent one between these two guys. With all signs pointing to Horiguchi in that first matchup, I think that the, the pick is clear. Horiguchi should get this done. He's already beaten the guy twice. The last one wasn't close. At all. It wasn't close at all. So for me, I think Horiguchi is the obvious pick here. The odds are incredibly slanted towards Horiguchi, so it makes sense. I think he's like a minus 500 now. But, you know, obviously you don't want to lay chalk on that, play, uh, you know, plain and plain and simply. But I do think Horiguchi is the pick. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you seen a big jump in on the side of the Algikubo? Also, let me know if I'm saying that right. Anybody that knows how to say that properly. Like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And we've got one more fight to break down. I'll see you there.